The primary focus of Postal throughout the series has been its satire, its crude and often vulgar sense of humour, all finished off with a spine-snapping twist of absurdity. In Postal Brain Damaged, these elements share the centre stage with the blistering pace of combat. But, a dark vignette rests over the game with outlying elements that tend to blend in with the many shades of viscera. These elements hide in plain sight and are soaked to the bone in horror. Since the entire game takes place within a dream, we can interpret parallels between Postal Dude's experiences and potential fears and anxieties conjured by his unconscious mind. Let's look to the enemies you encounter. The vast majority of the opposition you meet mimic things Dude knows from his life in paradise. The populace, the wildlife, the pandemic, People and events, faceless suburbanites, enraged boomers, angry dogs. While these seem perfectly reasonable to exist, some without exaggeration, more outlandish examples are present as well. The marching band, for instance, is a set piece that occurs in both Postal 1 and 2, as well as appearing as zombies in Paradise Lost. The fragmented remnants here are the saxophone, a twisted fusion of human and instrument as well as the arse face. Both lean heavily on the elements of body horror, their figures malformed into inhuman shapes. Both also employ feces as projectiles in an effort to elicit further disgust from the player. Golden Retrievers are aggressive and vicious, but that's mild by comparison to its more fierce counterpart. The stronger variety is much larger and more deadly. What's more, after enduring damage, they lose both their eyes, leaving empty, bleeding sockets, and the exploded wood flays the flesh on its wounded back. Some of these enemies are less visceral, and are more symbolic of broader fears. Nurse Joy, the lobotomized freaks, the asylum victims. A glimpse back to ages past, where the mentally unfit were forgotten in asylums, and left to rot. The crawlers prey on sexual fear, Latex-bound, xenomorph-mouthed terrors, inspired by H.R. Giger and his style of crossing the humane with the mechanical, with an overtly violent and sexual nature. Another nod to Giger's work is the xenomorph enemies that appear later in the game. While I don't believe it's a direct reference, I can't help but think that these switches appear very similar to the art piece labelled Atomic Children, also by Giger. Far above all these foes and their representations, though, stands one monster. One that champions the horror elements of Postal. The Goliath, stands several feet taller than you, is an amalgam of many bodies contorted into a mass of agony. This cage of bodies lurches slowly and unnaturally on bloody legs, faces writhing in torture until it spots you. The act of caging human beings as a form of execution originated in the medieval era and reached its peak of popularity in England during the 1700s. Victims were placed in cages to endure the fatal torture of hunger, harsh climates, and carry on seeking beasts. The cages were often hung high for all to see, a grisly reminder of strict obedience. Whether the Goliath is some morbid representation of dude's psyche, or a direct funny reference to Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3 is up for speculation. In the comments of the last Postal video, many attentive viewers drew a connection from Postal 1 to the final boss of Brain Damaged, a mirror of the dude himself. The antagonist dude speaks of himself as a cancer in dude's brain, the demon on the inside. He is voiced by Rick Hunter, as with the lines labelled Demon in the original Postal. While he speaks in rather broad terms as an id to the dude's ego, it's still very possible that this is a manifestation of the evil inside, especially considering the intrinsic link through the voice. Demon or otherwise, this is not the first instance of the dude appearing to himself. During Paradise Lost, he appeared to himself and was forced to do errands, but the more striking occurrence is a loading screen for the outskirts level of Postal Redux. While Redox would get an update with cooperative play, the game launched without it. The co-op campaign includes a new ending scene, but that's a story for another time. There's one more small hint in this scene, 
The fingerless gloves that the antagonist dude wears match those worn in Postal 1. While the original in-game model is hard to see, the promotional material, box art, and even the Redux version all appear to don the very same fingerless gloves. The only other time this occurs in the series is Postal 3. bears the unmistakable image of an AK-47 rifle. Dude seemingly kills this part of himself, inflicting the titular brain damage, and apparently sacrificing certain bodily functions for a firmer grip on his own morality. Rick Hunter's dude expresses that this is far from the first time the two have had this conversation, saying that he cannot be forgotten or dismissed. As this all takes place within the dream, what is real, true, interpreted, and objective are all up for debate, but I feel that this is at least a nod to the grim original installment of Postal. Thank you for watching. The response to the previous Postal video has been astronomical. I'm truly touched by all the stories and experiences with the game everyone has left in the comments. If you'd like to see more content in this darker style, you can let me know by subscribing, tweeting at me, or telling me live on Twitch. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so at the Patreon link in the description. And I'd like to thank my current patrons for their support.